Mexico versus Ecuador, we're going to offer you a unique perspective. What makes it so unique? What makes it unique is that we've spent 13 months in Mexico and six months in Ecuador. So we're gonna offer you a more in-depth experience while comparing these two countries, rather than the usual travel vlogger that you see on YouTube that blows in and out of a location in a weekend and then offers you their complete travel guide. These videos are usually heavy on cinematic footage featuring impossibly attractive people that are heavy on eye candy but light on actual information and experience. We're gonna share with you something a little bit more meaty. Let's start off with the funnest topic of all, beaches, because that's probably at front and center of your criteria of things that you like when you're looking at either vacationing mm -hmm. or retiring or relocating to Mexico versus Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Ecuador has a long coastline with many beautiful beaches and we enjoyed several of them. Areas like Salinas, Alon, Montanita, Mompiche, Ayempe, they're all going to offer beaches that will be pleasant for you to stay at. With that said, there are many beaches in Mexico that literally blow away Ecuador's finest beaches. Just to name a few, in Mexico, the areas of Cancun, Baja California, Huatulco, Puerto Escondido, Cozumel, will all be far and away much more beautiful. The second most popular point and everyone loves to do it and usually does it every day is food. Mexico is by far and away the more imaginative in their cuisine choices and flavors. Mm -hmm. Mexico will offer you far more variety in their commonly available food dishes. Tacos, burritos, enchiladas, fajitas, and it goes on. <laughs> Whereas in Ecuador, your most commonly available dishes will be things like bolones, corviche, and cebollada. Not exactly part of your everyday vocabulary, right? What even are those, right? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> if you haven't heard of any of those Ecuadorian food items, you'll enjoy this video here. Where we walk you through all of these items, our opinion of it, and us enjoying them. Or lack thereof. It might be common in your household to have conversations like this when you're considering eating out at a restaurant or getting delivery in. Hey, would you like to have Italian tonight? Chinese? Mexican? Right. Whereas a conversation like this might be less common. Hey. Would you like to have Italian, Chinese, Ecuadorian? I've never said that ever. <laughs> so you get our point. Mexican food is almost like a verb. Based on our first two points we've covered in this video, you may get the impression that we're all pro-Mexico and anti-Ecuador. But your impression may change after you listen to how we cover all the rest of the points in this video. Point number three, general cost comparisons between Ecuador and Mexico. Staying with food as a comparison, a simple meal in Ecuador will generally cost between three and five dollars US. Whereas in Mexico, you should expect to pay approximately double for that for a comparable meal, six to ten dollars US. In regards to rent for accommodations, we found that rent in Ecuador was around 30% less than a comparable accommodation in Mexico. Painting with a broad brush, Ecuador has a lower cost of living than Mexico does. Point number four when comparing Mexico to Ecuador is transportation or driving. Mm. Let's start with driving your own private vehicle. When it comes to driving our own private vehicle in Mexico, we have felt comfortable doing it here and have done it several times in the past, whether it be purchasing our own vehicle or renting one, which we've done on multiple occasions. We've spent over 13 months in Mexico and we've driven our own vehicles several times there, feel comfortable doing it and would do it again in the future. Yeah. Now this is not to say Mexico is without dangers and it's not saying that the police in Mexico are not corrupt and you won't have to bribe yourself out of situations sometimes because you certainly will, they do exist. Now knock on Madeira, this has never <laughs> happened to us in Mexico so far. Comparing that to Ecuador, our research before arriving indicated that it might not be a good idea to drive our own private vehicle for several reasons. So we chose not to. But after being in Ecuador for six months, we were delighted to find out that driving our own vehicle there would in fact have been a terrible idea. Yeah. The reasons for this include the willingness and the frequency of the Ecuadorian police shaking down foreigners and locals for offenses, sometimes imaginary, sometimes real. Mm. For small offenses, like the tread on your tire was too low, you need to buy four new tires so they would ticket a local or a foreigner driving a car. Mm -hmm. 
The Ecuadorian police make the Mexican police look like angels. <laughs> the frequency that we observed road checks in Ecuador versus in Mexico was probably about 10 to 1 yeah. Ecuador to Mexico. It was a lot. They were everywhere. Even when speaking with an American man that had relocated to Ecuador because he had married an Ecuadorian woman, he was describing to us that whenever they drove from their home in Quito to the coast, they would have to pack an extra $50 US just to cover the inevitable bribes that they would have to offer to get where they were going. This kind of behavior is embarrassing, or at least I hope it's embarrassing for Ecuadorians. Additional reasons for us choosing not to drive our own vehicle in Ecuador were road conditions, often being treacherous, blind corners, mountainous conditions, the unwritten rule of Ecuadorians turning two-lane traffic into three-lane. Yeah. That was unnerving. <laughs> And finally, in a general sense, the drivers were dangerous. And we don't say that lightly because we've traveled extensively. Mm. When compared to Mexican drivers, who can be scary in their own right, Ecuadorian drivers were far more scary and more dangerous. Going way too fast, generally more than in Mexico. Yeah. Uh, dangerous behavior and maneuvers behind the wheel far more frequently than even Mexico. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say Ecuadorian drivers are the worst in the world. No, they're not even anywhere near drivers like Indonesia or Vietnam. After spending six months in Ecuador, we're even more certain now than we were before that driving a private vehicle for us is just not a reasonable choice unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Many people do drive, but for us, we just chose to take safer options. For these reasons, we chose to primarily travel via bus, which thank goodness worked out well for us. Other options for you might include hiring a private driver, which is commonplace in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. And in certain regions, you can utilize taxis and or Uber even. Mm -hmm. Point number five when comparing Mexico to Ecuador is currency of the respective countries. Now in Mexico, obviously they will run on the Mexican peso with the exception of maybe the most touristy of locations mm -hmm. and or a few border towns, Mexico is generally not accepting US funds or whatever funds you might be bringing. And you will have to operate on their local currency, the Mexican peso. So you'll have to be considering things like converting USD or whatever your home currency is to Mexican peso. You'll have to be looking at the strength of that dollar, your home dollar compared to theirs and so on. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Ecuador, they run exclusively on USD. So if you're an American watching this, it'll be a very easy transition for you. You just bring your money from home and it plugs right into their system right there, plug and play. Yeah. None of the other concerns are present for you in Ecuador. Very simple. One little point might be to take minimal $100 bills and $50 US uh, denominations because they, they'll change 20s and under more readily. That's actually a crazy good point because we found <laughs> even time and time again that 20s were Sometimes. a bill that makes their eyes go like this and it was too big to to offer change for some reason ecuador is chronically low on change like <laughs> even bus drivers that take in change all day they just can't do it so good point Lori. 20 dollars bills and less if you show up with hundreds and fifties they they're useless sixth point of comparison between mexico and ecuador is wildlife this may come as a surprise to some of you, but it's our opinion that Mexico is an underrated country for wildlife. Did you know that Mexico has monkeys? I, I actually did not know that. In fact, Mexico has four different species of monkeys. Yeah, amazing. In addition, they boast anteaters, sloths, armadillos, and we're not even talking about the ocean yet. Just get away from the most touristy beach-like spots, get further up into the interior of the country, the mountains into higher elevation, and you'll start seeing an amazing myriad of wildlife in Mexico. In addition, we've long held the opinion that Mexico is a sleeper country for birds. Mm. We were pleasantly surprised in Baja, California, weren't we? Yeah, we really were. It was the first time we ever saw a cardinal and we saw a cool named bird called the Paraluxia. Yeah, in addition to that, Oaxaca State had an amazing diversity of birds when we visited there. In fact, Mexico has 57 different hummingbird species alone. But in this comparison, Mexico unfortunately is up against the wildlife diversity heavyweight of Ecuador. And Ecuador has superior wildlife, flora and fauna, and almost everything across the boards, insects included. And we're not even talking about the Galapagos, we're just talking about mainland Ecuador here. Mm -hmm. To put it in perspective with an apples and apples comparison, I just mentioned to you that Mexico has 57 different varieties of hummingbirds. Can you guess how many Ecuador has? You told me over 100. Ecuador has 135 different oh. species of hummingbirds. Awesome. Ecuador is so diversified in their wildlife that it's our opinion Ecuador out Costa Rica's Costa Rica. Hey, you know what? 
That might be an interesting video to watch.